नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स यू आर वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन ई विद्या चैनल चैनल नंबर ट्वेल्व आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस चैनल यू आर विद अस ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल एज वेल दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट पॉपुलेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डेंसिटी एंड ग्रोथ इंडिया एंड वर्ल्ड एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इज फॉर जियोग्राफी ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी हैव जॉइन बाय आर एक्सपर्ट एज वेल सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डीले लेट्स क्विकली मीट है यू आर मिस रेणुका शर्मा यू आर पी जी टी जियोग्राफी फ्रॉम लक्ष्मण पब्लिक स्कूल हॉस खास न्यू डेली वेरी वॉम वेलकम आम थैंक यू थैंक यू रेणु and before we start this particular session let me share some certain information to all the students and learners in case they have any query and question you can reach out to us through our various medium aap hame call kar sakte hain aap hame email bhi bhej sakte hain aap hame call karenge hamare telephone number pe jo hai 8800440559 ya phir aap hame email kar sakte hain hamara email address hai dth.class12@cit.nic.in और अगर आप हमारे YouTube चैनल के थ्रू हमसे जुड़े हैं यानी कि एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल पर हैं देन यू हैव टू गो टू द लाइव चैट बॉक्स एंड देन ओनली यू कैन ड्रॉप योर कमेंट आउट देर हमारे एक्सपर्ट को बहुत अच्छा लगेगा आप सभी की क्वेरीज और क्वेश्चन का जवाब देने में तो आप अपनी सभी क्वेरीज के साथ हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं वी आर वेटिंग फॉर योर पार्टिसिपेशन इन दिस सेशन सो मैं एक बार फिर से बता दूं कि हमारा टॉपिक रहेगा पॉपुलेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डेंसिटी एंड ग्रोथ इंडिया एंड वर्ल्ड यानी कि हम भारत और विश्व दोनों की बात करने वाले हैं तो मैम हम बहुत ही ब्रीफ में हम आपसे जानना चाहेंगे अगर हम इसकी बात करें पॉपुलेशन हम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात करें तो वाई एंड वाई इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट टू स्टडी दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक मैम अब ये देखिए कि दुनिया में लोग ही लोग हैं मन में ये विचार आता है इतने सारे लोग हैं इन सब लोगों की क्या जरूरत है इन लोगों के बारे में हम क्या जानते हैं तो हम उनके बारे में जब कुछ जानना चाहते हैं वो यहाँ क्यों रहते हैं कहीं ज्यादा रहते हैं कहीं कम रहते हैं तो इसीलिए हम भारत की जनसंख्या विश्व की जनसंख्या के बारे में पढ़ते हैं जी तो ये तो बात हुई कि हम ये चैप्टर या पॉपुलेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन क्यों पढ़ते हैं क्योंकि हमें पॉपुलेशन के बारे में जानना है तो हम ये बात पढ़ते हैं हम मैम जैसे आपने बताया कि हम देश के बारे में भारत के बारे में और विश्व के अलग अलग उसके बारे में जानते हैं अगर हम अपनी स्क्रीन पर नज़र डालें हम अपने प्रजेंटेशन पर नज़र डालें तो हमें मैम दो मैप दिख रहे हैं इससे पहले कि आप ये चर्चा आगे बढ़ाएँ डिस्कशन आगे बढ़ाएँ हम यहीं पर यह सवाल करना चाहेंगे एक मैप तो कलरफुल है दूसरे मैप में हमें डॉट्स नज़र आ रहे हैं मैम तो ये डॉट्स किस चीज़ों के लिए है So now student let's start with the chapter now the first map shows you different colors these colors are the altitudinal values that means darker brown high altitude lesser color green yellow low altitude depending on the physiographic factors and many more factors which we will study in this chapter the people are spaced on the earth if you see this map this map is known as dot map one dot ek bindu दो लाख लोगों को दर्शाता है दैट मीन्स वन डॉट इज इक्वल टू टू लैख पर्सन इफ यू सी दी नॉर्दर्न प्लेन वेर वी हैव मोर डॉट्स क्रिस क्रॉस नियर बाई डॉट्स दैट मीन्स वहां पर बहुत ज्यादा लोग रहते हैं जहां पर कम डॉट्स हैं दैट मीन्स वहां पर कम लोग रहते हैं आपके मन में ये विचार जरूर आता होगा कि इस जगह पर ज्यादा लोग इस जगह पर कम लोग क्यों रहते हैं और क्या दुनिया में भारत में हर जगह एक एक लोग को एक एक इंसान को काउंट किया जाता है Yes children we count each and every people on this earth in this world bharat mein the main source of population data is census आपने जरूर देखा होगा हर दस साल बाद आपके घर में कुछ लोग आते हैं जिनको डिप्यूट किया जाता है वो पूछते हैं इस घर में कितने लोग रहते हैं कितने मेल्स हैं कितने फीमेल्स हैं हाउ मेनी चिल्ड्रेन बिलो फिफ्टीन ईयर्स ऑफ एज हाउ मेनी बिटवीन फिफ्टीन टू फिफ्टी नाइन हाउ मेनी मोर देन फिफ्टी नाइन ईयर्स what is the education level of the people what is the occupation so population data is collected through census every 10 years in our country the first population census was conducted in 1872 but the complete census was conducted in 1881 so census is the main source which helps us to know about the population now children population is not only number of people it is the gender it is their religion it hmm. is their literacy level various aspects the variety the composition of the population is done by the 
सेंसेस मैम यहाँ पे मैं आपसे एक क्वेश्चन करना चाहूँगी इट्स इट्स माय जनरल क्वेरी जब हम सेंसेस कंडक्ट करते हैं और जब वो लोग हमारे पास आते हैं सबकी डिटेल्स लेके जाते हैं और एक रैंडम अगर मैं फिगर आपको बोलूँ कि पर्टिकुलर स्टेट में या पर्टिकुलर एरिया में अगर उन्होंने काउंट किए हैं कि वन लाख यहाँ पर लोग हैं तो इज़ दैट द एग्जैक्ट अमाउंट आई मीन द नंबर ऑफ पीपल Yes, they are the exact number of people as hmm. counted by the census. Okay. Exact number of people. Exact number. Yes. Okay, fine. So now we hmm. study about population distribution. The way people are spaced over the earth's surface. You must be wondering that there are certain places where more and more people are living, but there are places where the population is very less. But let's see this first graph given in your book also. 90% of the world population lives in about 10% of the land area. India is densely populated. The 10 most populous countries of the world contribute about 60% of the world's population. इसका मतलब जो 10 countries हैं, वो सबसे ज़्यादा populated हैं और इन 10 countries में छः तो हमारी एशिया में ही हैं. Hmm. Try to identify these countries which are in Asia: China, hmm. India, Indonesia. Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Japan. So these are the six countries of Asia. These are the ten most populous countries of the world. Now, people are important. People, as we consider, are the most important source of a country. As said, not money, not gold, not silver, not resources constitute a country. people constitute a country because people are the ones who will utilize these resources to fulfill the needs and aspirations of each and every one india is the second most populous country after china and what is the population if we take the census of 2011 our population was 1210 million on this particular year आर पॉपुलेशन इज लार्जर अगर हम नॉर्थ अमेरिका साउथ अमेरिका और ऑस्ट्रेलिया तीनों की पॉपुलेशन को जमा कर दे इफ यू एड द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका साउथ अमेरिका एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडिया इज पॉपुलेशन इज लार्जर देन दीज थ्री सो वी नीड टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन दिस नाउ आर मेन कंसर्न इज अन इवन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन जॉर्ज बी क्रेसी सेड ही रिमार्क फॉर एशिया स्पेशली फॉर एशिया एशिया हैज मेनी प्लेसेज where people are few and few places where people are very many matlab kuch jagah pe bahut sare log rehte hain kuch jagah ekdam khali lagti hai aisa kyun hota hai this is called uneven distribution of population hmm so ma'am why do we find uneven distribution of population now there are many factors iske bahut sare reasons hain hmm. according to these reasons we categorize the world into three areas densely populated moderately populated and sparsely populated now there are many factors we'll put more concentration on these three factors today geographical factors economic factors and socio cultural factors both for india and the world they are same and for india we'll discuss once again now geographical factors water landforms soil and climate economic economic considers money which fetches you money production consumption profit loss that means where we have minerals industries urban areas and finally we will study about socio cultural factors so let's talk about these factors one by one availability of water as you know water is the savior of life we require it for domestic purposes industrial irrigation agriculture urbanization so fresh water is the need of the human beings so wherever we have water fresh water in particular people tend to live there which areas have fresh water especially the river valleys since ancient ancient civilization the river valleys were the most densely populated areas of the world so availability of water is very very important for the human beings Now when we talk about landforms mountains plains plateaus coastal areas deserts each and every landform has a specific type of population more less moderate people prefer living on flat plains and gentle slopes why because these areas they are vast flat where the construction of roadways railways 
all these things become possible, canal digging becomes possible. So favorable for the production of crops to build roads, industries, in mountainous areas usually they hinder the development because accessibility becomes a major problem. Transport network is less. So initially they do not favor agricultural and industrial development. So these areas have less population. In India, the Ganga plains, they are the most densely populated areas. Whereas if we talk about Himalayan mountains, they are scarcely populated, very sparse population lives there. Climate, the most important thing. I do not think anybody would like to live in a climate which is very hot or very cold. So the very hot deserts and very cold deserts, they are very uncomfortable for the human inhabitation. But where we have comfortable climate, where much seasonal variation is not there, people tend to get attracted there. Areas with heavy rainfall will not promote the inhabitation. People do not live there. So such areas have low population. Think of Mediterranean region, such a pleasant area. So inhabitation from the early periods of history started there because of the pleasant climate. Soil, fertile soil. Soil means agriculture. Soil means vegetation. So all these agriculture and allied activities. What are allied activities children? It is horticulture, pisciculture, animal husbandry. So the areas where we have fertile loamy soils, they have more people living there because they support intensive agriculture, good agriculture and more agriculture. Now we come to economic factors, children minerals, minerals are the base of industries. Wherever we have minerals, the industries get attracted there. So mining, industrial activities, they generate employment. It is not only taking out of minerals, it is changing those minerals into finished goods also. So the skilled workers, semi-skilled workers, they all move to that area, start living there and that area becomes densely populated. Africa is not densely populated, but if you see Katanga, Zambia copper belt, it is such a good example where because of the availability of copper, mining is done, industries are being set up and is getting densely populated. Urbanization. What do you understand by urbanization children? That means more of urban population. That means dependence of population is not on primary, it is on secondary, tertiary, quaternary, quinary activities, isn't it? Cities they offer better employment facilities. Cities they are attractive because they have educational facilities, they have good medical facilities, good hospitals, better means of transport, communication and people get attracted to the modern amenities, good civic amenities. So the cities they draw people, they draw people to themselves. So the rural people or the people living in the rural areas, they tend to migrate in the urban areas and the cities they keep on growing in size. So cities are growing in size, the satellite towns are growing in size and the population is getting more and more. Mega cities of the world, they continue to attract large number of migrants every year. So people are moving to the urban areas and this is known as urbanization leading to more and more population concentration. Then we have industrialization. As I told you in mining, it is not only taking out of minerals, it is the industries also. Industries means the people working in the factory, yes, but along with that we have people taking raw material to the industries, bringing finished goods to the market, the transport operators, the shopkeepers, the bank employees, doctors, teachers, all the service providers, they tend to live there. So the industrial belts keep on growing in population. Kobe Osaka region of Japan, it is thickly populated because they have more number of industries there and industries means employment opportunities. Now we come to social and cultural factors. Human beings are the society, the society attracts people. People get attracted because they have religious purposes like Haridwar, Varanasi, Makkah. These are the places which are densely populated or of cultural significance, 
I remember many of you going to Goa every year because you celebrate the cultural importance there, New Year celebrations and all. So, people tend to move away from places where there is social and political unrest, where there is no stable government. Many a time the government offer incentives people to come and live in the sparsely populated area. They tend to build industries there, give more opportunities so that the sparsely populated areas also get densely populated. So, these are the main factors on which the population depends, the uneven distribution of population is due to these factors. So, we are talking about factors, if we are talking about uneven distribution of population, if we are talking about comparatively two places, plains and high altitude areas, so high altitude areas in comparison, why are there more people in plains? For example, let us say northern plains, hmm. vast level land, vast level land with favorable climate. The construction of roadways, right. the construction laying of railway lines becomes very easy. Hmm. The construction of canals becomes very easy. So, these vast level plains, they attract agriculture, they attract people. So, the favorable climate, assured water supply, plain terrain, all these things lead to development of irrigation. So, more and more people live there. Now, if we consider the interior district of the southern and central Indian states, where we have plateau region, uneven plateau, or where we have the Himalayan region, which are inaccessible, not each and every means of transport is reaching there. So, these northeastern states, western states, they have less population, but the deltas, the eastern and western coastal plain, they have more and more population. Right. So, this is the reason why we can say that why are the plains comparatively more densely populated? So, we will continue to continue this chapter. Continue. Okay. Now, when we talk about socio-economic factors, the development of irrigation, think of India. Rajasthan is a desert, but now Rajasthan is an upcoming granary of India. How? With the Indira Gandhi Canal. So, the development of irrigation, availability of mineral resources in Jharkhand, in Chhattisgarh, in Bihar and all these peninsular states where the development of transport network is there. For example, Konkan Railway. So, when the region gets all these facilities, Indira Gandhi Canal, availability of mining, Konkan Railway, just for example. So, the result is the population changes from moderate to high because people they get more and more opportunities there, employment opportunities, education facilities, medical facilities. So, the areas which were previously very thinly populated, they become thickly populated. Now, historical factors are very important for India. Why? Because India has attracted many travelers from the world. Isn't it? So, high concentration of people due to early history of human settlement and development of transport. The region falling in the river plains, coastal areas of India have remained the regions of larger population concentration because all the travelers they came from the water bodies, from the sea. So, all these coastal areas they became thickly populated. It still remains high because of the early history of human settlement and development of transport network. So, historical factors, especially in case of India, play a very important role in the high concentration of population. Now, let us talk about density of population. Population density means number of persons living per unit area. According to 2011 census, in India, 382 persons lived per square kilometer. So, number of persons per unit area is known as density of population. So, since last 50 years, the population density has recorded an increase of about 260 persons per square kilometer, as ranging from 117 persons in 1951. So, you see the density of population also changes according to the factors we have discussed the physiographic, the economic, the socio-cultural factors, the density also changes. Now, India is an agrarian society, is not it? Most of the population is dependent on agriculture. Hmm. When we say agriculture, we have to find out the physiological density. How is it done? 
the normal density when we calculate is total popul the total population upon area of that country. But when we find out physiological density, physiological means landform. So, the total, po total population divided by net cultivated area. Net cultivated area means the area which is actually under cultivation. And then we find out agricultural density, the total agricultural population divided by net cultivable area. So, a normal density how we find, how we calculate the physiological density and how we calculate the agricultural density is of utmost importance. And who is the agriculture population? It includes cultivators, agricultural laborers and their family members. Now, according to this, if we see according to this, the urban regions of Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Bangalore, Pune, Ahmedabad, Chennai and Jaipur, they have high concentration of population. Why? Because they have more industries. They are the urbanized areas of our country. So, urbanization, industrialization attract people from the rural areas. So, rural and urban migration plays an important role in urbanization and industrialization. Okay. So, ma'am, now we have seen here, so, as you have told us about some of our learners and students, we want to know, is it a positive change or a negative change if we talk about population? Yes, that's a very good question, you have asked Reno. Positive change and a negative change. Positive change of population means the population is increasing. A negative change of population means the population is decreasing. Hmm. But how do we find out this change? There is also a different way of finding out. The population growth or population change refers to the change in number of inhabitants of a territory during a specific period of time. For example, from 1951 to 61 or 61 to 71, that means there should be a specific period of time. It can be positive when the population is increasing, it can be negative when the population is decreasing. So, it can be absolute numbers or the terms of percentage. Now, it is an important indicator of economic development. How? Because if the region is economically developed, the population change will be positive. If the government, if the people, they are socially uplifted, if we have good historical and cultural background and the population has a positive change, positive change in the growth, that means people like to live there. Whereas, if the population is decreasing, or is negative that means people are moving away from that particular region. So, let us try to find out how the growth of population in a particular area is found. For example, if the population of India in 2001 was 102.70 crores, 102.70 crores in 2001. Now, the population in 2011 is 121.02 crores. If we subtract them, the answer would be 18.15. This is the growth of population in actual numbers, the total actual numbers. But if we find out the percentage, then it becomes the growth rate. So, actual growth is the absolute number, growth rate is expressed in percentage. But this does not mean only birth rate and death rate. A natural growth means births minus deaths. But the actual growth rate involves a new variable that is migration. What is migration? Movement of people from one place to another. The way I told you people migrate from rural to urban areas in attraction of modern facilities, modern amenities, medical facilities, employment. So, migration plays a very important role in the actual growth of population. So, how do we find out? Births minus deaths plus in migration. In migration means how many people have come to that particular region minus out migration. That means how many people have left that particular area. So, the actual growth of population is different from natural growth. What is natural growth? Births minus deaths. What is actual growth? Births minus deaths plus in migration minus out migration. So, this is positive growth of population as I told you, when the birth rate is more than the death rate between two points of time or when people from other countries migrate 
permanently to a region that is a positive growth of population. Whereas, if the population decreases between two points of time, it is known as negative growth rate. Why? When the birth rate falls below the death rate and people they migrate to some other country, they leave that particular region and move on to the next country. Right. So, ma'am, यहाँ पे जैसे हम screen पे भी देख रहे हैं population change के components हम आपसे जानना चाहेंगे. What are those, ma'am? So, when we discuss about birth rate, death rate, migration, let's try to find out how birth rate is calculated, how death rate is calculated. So, the main components of population change are births, deaths, and migration. The crude birth rate, as we call it, CBR. It is expressed as a number of live births. Live births means jitne bache jivit paida hue. Hmm. Live births in a year per thousand of population. So CBR is equal to BI. That means live births. Live births divided by population and multiplied by one thousand. CBR is crude birth rate. BI is live births during that year, and P is the mid-year population of that area. So this tells us about the crude birth rate. Then we find out the death rate, CDR. It is expressed in terms of number of deaths in a particular year per thousand of population in a particular region. So number of deaths per thousand. How is it calculated? Number of deaths divided by estimated mid-year population of that year multiplied by one thousand. So population growth occurs not only by increasing birth rate but also due to a decreasing death rate. And decreasing death rates are the result of better hospital, better medical facilities, portable water, good sanitation, and all. And migration is the most attractive thing that happens when people move from one place to another. The place they move from is called place of origin. जहाँ से वो एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाते हैं, उस जगह को हम कहेंगे place of origin. And where they go and settle, जहाँ पे वो जाके रहना शुरू कर देते हैं, that area is known as place of destination. अब एक जगह से दूसरी जगह क्यों जाते हैं? जिस जगह से वो गए, वहाँ तो population कम हो गई, और जहाँ पे वो जाके रहना शुरू कर देते हैं, वहाँ पे population बढ़ जाती है. So the place of origin sees a decrease in population, whereas the place of destination sees an increase in population. So this can be interpreted as a spontaneous effort to achieve a better balance between population and resources. Why do people move? Why do people migrate? Why do people leave a place? Why do people go and settle down to some other area? That means they are getting some facilities there, or they are lacking some facilities in the place of origin. So migration can be permanent, temporary, or seasonal. It can take place in a various ways: rural to rural, rural to urban, urban to urban, urban to rural. Try to find out examples of all these. Do you realize? The same person can be both immigrant and emigrant. जिस जगह पे वो नई जगह पे जा रहा है, when he moves to a new place, that particular place he'll be called an immigrant. Whereas जहाँ से वो निकल के जा रहा है, that place he is an emigrant. So the same person is both immigrant and emigrant. Now we try to find out the reasons of all this migration. Push and pull factors. Children, push का क्या मतलब है? कोई आपको धकेल रहा है. Pull का कोई क्या मतलब है? कोई आपको अपने पास बुला रहा है. So push factors can be said जो factors जो आपको अच्छे नहीं हैं, जो आपको वहाँ से निकलने के लिए मजबूर कर रहे हैं. Pull factors जो आपको attract कर रहे हैं, isn't it? So why do people migrate? They migrate for better facilities, better economic conditions, better social life. So, what can be the push of factors? That means उनको place of origin बहुत कम अच्छा लगता है, less attractive. क्यों? Maybe that particular area has unemployment. They have poor living conditions, political turmoil. The government is not stable, unpleasant climate. Maybe very harsh, maybe very hot, maybe very cold. Natural disasters. Epidemics, spreading of diseases, socio-economic backwardness. That means these are all unattractive factors. So they are known as push factors. Pull factors. They attract you. What can attract you? A better job, better job opportunities, better living conditions, peace, stable government, security of life. 
pleasant climate good things that means pull factors are attractive push factors they are the ones which are lacking in a particular region so birth rate death rate migration these are the three factors which actually bring a change in the population fine ma'am yahan par hum apni is discussion ko aage badhayenge yahan par hum aap se janna chahenge demographic transition ke bare mein what is exactly is demographic transition ma'am now children when we say demographic transition iska matlab kuch badlav aa raha hai पॉपुलेशन में जनसंख्या में कुछ बदलाव आ रहा है वो बदलाव क्या हो सकता है जनसंख्या ज़्यादा से कम हो जाएगी इलिटरेट से लिटरेट हो जाएगी रूरल से अर्बन हो जाएगी इज इंट इट सो व्हेन दीज चेंजेस टेक प्लेस इन द पॉपुलेशन दिस इज नोन एज डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन दिस डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजिशन थियोरी इट इज वेरी ईजी इट इज वेरी गुड टू अंडरस्टैंड the population to understand the birth rate death rate literacy levels the occupational structure and it can also predict the future population of that particular area the theory tells us about the population of any region how it changes from high birth and high deaths to low births and low deaths high birth se low birth kaise hogi high deaths se low deaths kaise hogi these rates they change how do they change when the society progresses society kaise progress karti hai when the dependency of the population shifts from primary to secondary from primary to secondary tertiary quaternary quinary that means the rural agrarian changes into urban industrial moreover illiteracy level decreases people become more literate as the people become more literate they know the importance of low birth rates they know the importance of low death rates they know the importance of medical facilities small family all these things so these changes occur in stages which are collectively known as demographic cycle try to see this graph in your books also how this graph shows three stages three stages of demographic transition see the first stage high fertility fertility word is used for births jahan pe zyada bacche paida ho rahe hain mortality is used for death okay so high fertility means high births high mortality means more deaths because people reproduce more why do people reproduce more kyunki tab aaj se 200 saal pehle deaths zyada hoti thi epidemics zyada hota tha food supply assured nahi thi so people experienced more deaths now when they had more deaths they wanted more people to find more people to find food supply for them more people to work from them so just to compensate for the deaths due to epidemics and variable food supply they produced more now the population growth was slow most of the people were engaged in agriculture because in the beginning of the civilization the main dependency was on agriculture and large families were the asset tab lagta tha bada parivar hai bahut sare log hai kaam karne ke liye but life expectancy was low hmm. log zyada lambi umar tak jeete nahi the jaldi mar jate the people were mostly illiterate the spread of education was not there and they had low levels of technology now we have technology we can compensate for any type of disaster isn't it so 200 years ago all the countries of the world were in this stage and this stage is the first stage where we have high birth rate high death rate illiteracy and lack of technology very very low stage of technology so this was the first stage where the birth rate and death rate was more so remember high birth rate high death rate dependency on primary occupations now we move on to the second stage now in the second stage fertility remains high in the beginning okay second stage in the beginning high birth rate but it declines with time why it declines with time because improvements in sanitation health conditions good medical facilities were the result isn't it now reduced mortality rate was also there because they had good medical conditions good medical facilities good health facilities so the death rate also declined so the population was still increasing mortality decreased 
birth rate decreased but because of the low birth death rates the gap in the net addition of the population was still high the second stage of demographic transition. In the third stage both fertility and mortality declined fertility means birth rate declined mortality means deaths also decline. Now the population can either be stable or grows slowly the population becomes urbanized the dependence on secondary tertiary occupation is more the people are more literate and has high technical know-how and now they know that small family is a good family they can deliberately control the family size unke paas parivar control the family planning measures were reachable so this shows that human beings are extremely flexible बर्थ रेट कम करना उनके अपने हाथ में है परिवार नियोजन की सारी तकनीक उनको आती है एंड दे आर एबल टू एडजस्ट देयर फर्टिलिटी इज इंट इट सो दिस थर्ड स्टेज से इज दैट एवरीथिंग इज इन द पॉपुलेशन हैंड इन द ह्यूमन बींग्स हैंड सो पॉपुलेशन वेन इट बिकम्स अर्बनाइज लिटरेट दे नो गुड टेक्नोलॉजी दे नो गुड नो हाउ दे नो स्मॉल फैमिली इंपॉर्टेंस दे नो द फैमिली प्लानिंग मेजर्स सो द थर्ड स्टेज शोज अ स्टेबल और द पॉपुलेशन ग्रोज slowly these are the three stages of demographic transition ji to ma'am yahan pe jaise hum aa gaye hain aur ek baar phir se hum apne sabhi dekhne walon ko kahenge ki dear learners and viewers agar aapke mann mein koi bhi query aa rahi hai population distribution se judi hui aap apni queries hum tak zarur pahunchaye aap hame youtube pe message kar sakte hain comment kar sakte hain ncert official ke live chat box pe ja ke aapko message drop karna hai ma'am yahan par agar hum baat kare apne इंडिया की तो यहाँ पे अगर हम हर स्टेट को देखें तो पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी को हम किस तरह से देख सकते हैं कि वो वेरी कर रही है मैम जी एज यू सी ऑन दिस मैप द डॉट मैप ये जो बिंदु मैप आपको दिख रहा है इससे आपको पता चल रहा है पॉपुलेशन इज वेरी मच अन इवनली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कंसिडर ऑल दो फैक्टर्स फिजिकल फैक्टर्स क्लाइमेटिक चेंजेस फर्टिलिटी ऑफ सॉइल एवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ वाटर सोशल कंडीशन इकोनॉमिक condition so the india specially has highly uneven pattern of population distribution because we have variety of physiographic divisions we have mountains in the north we have desert in the west we have hilly regions in the east we have large long coastline we have deltas so all these physical divisions they also decide the population of a country the percentage share of population of the states and union territories in the country show that uttar pradesh has the highest population in our country isn't it it is followed by maharashtra maharashtra is number 2 in the high population rank 3 goes to bihar and fourth is west bengal so all these regions if you say let's say uttar pradesh why is uttar pradesh densely populated because it is a flat area it has assured water supply it has industries so all these things attract similarly maharashtra urbanized state more industries urbanization bihar a region of mining mineral resources rich mineral resources attract people for employment west bengal fertile fertile delta industries so these regions they attract people from the surrounding states also so the four states they have maximum population are uttar pradesh followed by maharashtra bihar and west bengal now state with high population when we say uttar pradesh has highest rest of the states are maharashtra bihar west bengal madhya pradesh tamil nadu rajasthan karnataka gujarat and andhra pradesh that means the total population of india if you consider 76% of the population population lives in these states children remember the names of these states 76% of the population lives in these states now there are states with moderate population we'll discuss the reasons also for that assam haryana jharkhand chatisgarh kerala punjab goa these are the states which have moderate population why do they have moderate population because they again have less of urbanization more dependence on agriculture but there are states which have very low population they are mostly the hilly areas the tribal areas like jammu and kashmir 
Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Northeastern states, Union territories excluding Delhi. Delhi has dense population. If you see this map, the darkest one is Delhi, the center of Delhi which is the capital of India. It has more population. Whereas, low population is usually in the hilly areas where the accessibility becomes less, less of economic development also can be one of the reason. Now, there are different phases of population growth. I hope you understand what is population growth. The population growth is calculated by birth rate, death rate, migration, all these things. So, there are four different phases of population growth in our country. Phase 1, 1901 to 1921. Think of those years better. It is stagnant. That means, the population is not increasing. It is a stationary phase. Why? Because of very low growth rate. Why the growth rate was low? Consider the demographic transition theory here because of high birth rates and low death rates. No, high death rates and high birth rates. Why high birth rates? Because they wanted to compensate for the death rate. Why high death rates? Because they had less of medical facilities, low technical know-how. Moreover, they were more dependent on the nature. In phase 2, 1921, to 1951. It is a period of steady population growth. Why we had high birth rate? Why we had low death rate? Because we got assured water supply, assured food supply and we had good medical facilities. So, the death rates decreased gradually. So, when we subtract high birth rate to low death rate, the population was increasing at a very steady rate. But in phase 3, 1951 to 1981. This period is known as the period of population explosion, especially in India. Why? Because there was rapid fall in death rate. Why was there rapid fall in death rate? Yes, because yeah. of good medical facilities, hmm. good hospitals, hygienic conditions of living, good sanitation, assured food supply. And this high fertility rate was the main cause of this explosion. And in this stage, even the death rate was low because of all these factors we have discussed. So, the phase 1951 to 1981 is known as the period of population explosion, where the population exploded like anything. Phase 4, it is till now, 1981 till present, the growth rate has started downward trend gradually. Why the growth rate has started downward trend gradually? Because now the people know the importance of small family. There is an increase in the mean age of marriage. There is improved quality of life, particularly education of females. So, when the females are educated, they also know the importance of a small family norm. Isn't it? So, the growth rate has started downward trend gradually because of downward trend in the birth rate. So, these are the four different phases of population growth. Okay. Ma'am, ye to char phases rahe. Yahan pe hum aap se ek question, mere ek general query hai. Aur wo main aapke saath share karna chahungi ki jaise humne dekha ki कई जगह है जहां पे बहुत डेंसिटी है पॉपुलेशन की इंडिया में वैरी कर रही है कहीं पे मॉडरेट है कहीं पे लो है जैसे हिल स्टेशंस पे लो पॉपुलेशन वो है डेंसिटी है बट अगर हम किसी सीजन की बात करें या कुछ पर्टिकुलर टाइम की बात करें तो वी कैन सी दोस प्लेसेस वर पैक्ड विद पीपल राइट बिकॉज़ टूरिज्म वहां पे बहुत ज्यादा होता है स्टेशंस में तो ऐसे में हम क्या कहेंगे ऑल द वहां का जो पॉपुलेशन है वो तो कम ही है लेकिन जब टेंपरेरी सीजन में या क्या कुछ टेंपरेरी पॉपुलेशन भी काउंट कर किया जाता है एज सच जी इसमें ये देखा जाता है जैसे टूरिस्ट प्लेसेस स्पेशली द हिल स्टेशंस ड्यूरिंग द समर मंथ्स दे आर पैक्ड विद पीपल व्हाई बिकॉज़ द अट्रैक्शन ऑफ बेटर क्लाइमेट इज देयर द वेदर कंडीशंस आर बेटर सो द पीपल दोस हु लिव ऑन द प्लेन एरिया जहां पे बहुत ज्यादा एक्सट्रीम गर्मी होती है वो हिल स्टेशंस पे चले जाते हैं वो कोस्टल रीजंस पे चले जाते हैं तो उस वक्त जो पॉपुलेशन कैलकुलेट की जाती है वो सीजनल कैलकुलेट की जाती है कि पीपल माइग्रेट सिर्फ उस सीजन में करें फॉर फ्यू डेज सो इट इज यूजुअली सीन दैट द सीजनल माइग्रेशन इज जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ टूरिज्म इजेंट इट बट टेम्पररी मीन्स बच्चे कुछ दिन के लिए पढ़ने जा रहे हैं किसी स्टेट में किसी कंट्री में दो साल के लिए गए तीन साल के लिए वो टेम्पररी माइग्रेशन है 
परमानेंट माइग्रेशन है जब बच्चे उस जगह से मूव कर जाते हैं दूसरी जगह एंड दे टेक अ जॉब आउट देयर एंड दे स्टार्ट लिविंग देयर परमानेंटली दैट बिकम्स अ परमानेंट माइग्रेशन सो व्हेन वी सी दिस मैप सो दिस मैप क्लियरली शोस दैट द एक्सट्रीम क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशंस इफ यू सी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर लद्दाख रीजन यू हैव लेस नंबर ऑफ डॉट्स देयर वहां कम बिंदु है राइट right. क्यों क्योंकि उस जगह पे हार्श क्लाइमेट है एक्सट्रीम विंटर्स हो जाते हैं द एरिया इज कवर्ड विद स्नो so the economic activities are less there wahan pe logo ke paas occupation more and more employment facilities nahi hai and because of extreme climate people are less there if you see the western part of rajasthan ab rajasthan mein dekhiye wahan bhi aapko kam dots nazar aayenge kyunki wahan pe that area is covered with sand hmm a little area in gujarat swampy marshy area so these areas when they do not have inhabitants the reason is extreme physical conditions extreme climatic conditions if you see arunachal pradesh in the east in the east arunachal pradesh has very less density bahut kam dots aapko wahan pe dikh rahe hain because that area you have high mountains you have hilly region you have river coming from there so that area becomes less inhabitable for the human beings but the same thing goes for assam and west bengal wahan pe nadi hai because wahan pe brahmaputra river hai yahan pe river hugli hai fertile soil hai people get occupation there agriculture and allied activities people practice animal husbandry people practice sericulture people practice pisciculture so they have good occupation if you see the coastal areas eastern coast and western coast they also have moderate population because eastern coast we have deltas deltas of mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri so these fertile deltas promote agriculture in the western side if we see we don't have deltas we have two estuaries but these areas are urbanized these areas have mineral resources so eastern and western coast see kerala kerala is densely populated because it has fertile soil good occupational facilities in india we have the northern plains which cover punjab the parts of haryana delhi uttar pradesh bihar west bengal parts of assam these areas are densely populated and the regions where we have high mountains hilly regions they have less of population hmm ma'am ye to aapne hame bahut hi detail mein bataya map ke through ki jahan pe bhi kyun jo population hai wo dense hai ya phir kyun bahut kam hai abhi hamare paas kafi time hai hamare is session ke liye what extra would you like to add in this particular thing ma'am yes now when we talk about sources of hmm. data hmm census census hame kya kya cheeze batata hai the population data collected by the census tells us about the composition of population now what is population composition population composition means the population jo jansankhya hai usme hum kis kis bare mein janna chahte hain kitne males kitne females that hmm. is the sex ratio hmm. kitne literate kitne illiterate the literacy ratio hmm. isn't it how many people are living in the rural area how many people are living in the urban area so division of population into rural and urban then we decide how many people we calculate how many people are dependent on the primary occupation secondary occupation and tertiary occupation so accordingly the occupational structure is decided then we try to discuss about the religious structure how many people are hindus muslims sikhs isais jurastians jainism buddhist so all these religions of a country including parsis so this analysis is also done so the census of an area helps us to find out the composition of population and how many people speak the different linguistic approach how many languages of the country how many people speak hindi english the local languages of the state so these are the main sources of population data so whenever the population data is collected people come to your houses give them the correct information because each and every individual is counted each and every individual for a country matters because people are the main resources of a country no gold no silver i said only people they are the ones who will utilize the available resources they are responsible for the economic development of a country they are responsible to 
employ people in different activities when we have more mining we have more industries more production more consumption so we tend to export more so that means the population distribution the population density the population growth and the population composition is a very important data which tells us about the population of that country jo us desh ki jansankhya hai jo us desh ke log hain hamare desh ke unhi logon se hamara desh bana hai jitne hamare resources available hain unhi resources ko utilize karne ke liye hame population ki zarurat hai like we say population can be quantity population can be quality quantity means the number of people quality means those are contributing hmm. something to the nation for the economic development of the country hence we study about people we study how people are spaced on the earth's surface and how the people are spaced and what can be the reason of this spatial distribution of population so these are the major factors which decide the density of population the growth of population and the distribution of population children consider these two terms as separate terms population distribution and population density population distribution means the spacing of people how the people are living where the people are living but density means the number of persons per square kilometer per square unit area this per square unit area decides as to how the people are dependent on that particular area for their survival and the dependence and the density are dependent on these three factors geographical factors economic factors and socio cultural factors when we talk about geographical factors when we have more people on the plain area so you understand why people live on plain areas because it provides good facilities why people have more settlement in the areas of minerals yes because they get employment and employment is just not taking out minerals hmm. it is changing these minerals into finished goods changing the raw material into finished goods which involves a lot of people which involves transportation which involves people engaged in communication which involves people providing banking facilities people providing all the services so when people have more living more in a particular area densely populated that means the region is economically developed that region is producing more employment facilities and people are consuming more products there and what is urbanization the movement of people from the rural to the urban areas why do people move from rural to urban areas hmm. because the rural areas the dependence is more on primary activities agriculture and allied activities whereas in the urban areas the dependence of people is more on the secondary tertiary quaternary and quinary activities right moreover urbanization means basic facilities are good basic amenities are good educational facilities are there educational and employment facilities hmm. so those were the factors of uh, population distribution dear learners and viewers so ma'am aapne bahut hi detail mein hame bataya hamare sare viewers ko bataya ki kis tarah se kya cheeze hoti hai kya kya factors hote hain aur in sabhi baaton ke piche kya main importance hoti hai aur abhi samay hai ki hum is session ko yahi pe wind up kar de renuka ma'am lekin jaane se pehle hum aapko bahut bahut dhanyawad karna chahenge thank you so much thank you so very much for being with us aur aapne itne acche se chapter hamare sabhi viewers tak pahunchaya to isliye bhi bahut bahut dhanyawad अपने सभी देखने वालों को अभी हम धन्यवाद करेंगे कि आप हमारे साथ रहे थ्रू आउट दिस सेशन इससे पहले कि मैं ये सत्र यहाँ पर समाप्त करूँ एक बहुत जरूरी सूचना हम आपके साथ साझा करना चाहेंगे रिगार्डिंग एन सी टेक्स्ट बुक्स शैक्षणिक सत्र 2023-24 के लिए एन की पाठ्य पुस्तकें देश भर में उपलब्ध है आप ये पाठ्य पुस्तकें एन के सेल्स काउंटर से जाकर ले सकते हैं जो कि नई दिल्ली अहमदाबाद बंगलुरु कोलकाता और गुवाहाटी में स्थित है ये बिक्री केंद्र प्रातः साढ़े बजे से शाम 
शाम छह बजे तक कार्यरत रहेंगे पूरे सप्ताह सभी सरकारी छुट्टियों के साथ साथ शनिवार और रविवार को भी यदि किन्हीं कारणों से आप यहाँ पे नहीं जा सकते हैं तो आप ऑनलाइन भी ऑर्डर कर सकते हैं आपको जाना होगा हमारे वेबसाइट पर जो है एनसीईआरटीबुक्सीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआरटीआ